I'm having so much fun with this program. I want to show you more of the things that I've been learning about it. You can see we have projects, styles, and properties, and previews. Now, if you click on the left, if you click on the right, you'll see there's no properties right now. But click on the left, and all of a sudden you have all of your changes available to you. And that will be a global change to the photograph itself. So you can just go ahead and play with those controls and you can bring up your brightness. You can change your contrast. You play with it until you see that you're getting what you want. So if your photo is not completely color corrected or exposure corrected, you're able to go ahead and change it once you get it opened in post workshop. Now, another thing I wanted to show you is under your user we have building blocks and we're going to go ahead and try out some of these styles here now I'm starting to think of styles sort of like Photoshop actions so it's helping me to understand it just a little bit more when I open it here and I put random painter on it and notice I just laid it right on top and I didn't cover it. I have a lot of options when I go to properties and preview and I'm going to show you here some changes in the image as we change the brushes. So you can choose a different brush and see how it's going to affect it. You can also change the properties in the brushes. So you'll see when we choose this one we're going to have very round kind of brush strokes. So you need to just explore what you're doing with this program and the options are just amazing and that's all just playing with the um, the options and the brushes now that that was sort of an interesting one we're gonna I think we have another one that I'm gonna try here yep Let's go ahead and try that one, Paintbrush 5. Let's see, when I make the brush too small, the strokes are not showing up. So we're going to make the brush larger. Now look how nice it looks on her shirt and on the details. Don't worry about the face because we're going to go ahead and do the face a different way. And one of the most exciting things about using new software like this is the exploration of it. It reminds me of the first time I started working with um, Corel Painter. And just playing with it, I found so much about the program. This one, you can just work in so many layers. Look at all the changes here you can work with. You don't have to do any of this in Photoshop. You can do it all in the program. And I'm really liking those brush strokes that I'm getting there. You're able to zoom in and out very easily, as you can see. And yes, this is one of those times that I did do the video first and I'm doing the, the, uh, the audio afterwards. And I'm going to go ahead and try another one here. And... See how I just laid it right on top? That's the simple watercolor. Now, I'm not loving it, but I wanted you to see that it has a different set of controls, and you can still make many changes, especially where you have your edges on there. I deleted that layer. And now let's go ahead and try, I think it's the, let's see, I think it's that simple one right there, because I like that one a lot. Lay it right on top, and again, let's go look at the properties. And again, I have the options to use brushes to change it, and I also can use all of the uh, composite modes. So we're just going to take a look at them and see what we have, and I deleted that layer. Let's go back into styles. Now, this is, I just want you to see that you can paint with it also. 
that you can go in and do your own painting, but I didn't really spend much time on this part. So I'm playing with the uh, modes again. Look at all the fun stuff you can get here. And this is, it's amazing because we're not in Photoshop. I mean, we're, you can use this as a plugin in Photoshop. Yes, you can. But um, I've been using it more as a standalone right now. And there's where you get your properties to paint with. And I'm just starting to play with this part of the program. And it, it just blows my mind how much depth it has. There's so many controls to it and so much you can do. Now I'm just going to paint some black paint on there. You'll see on the left I have black chosen, so it's just going to be some black paint. And that's just to show you that it does work, that you can paint and that you can use your Wacom tablet with it. And oh, that's a shame I messed her up, didn't I? No, I think we can get out of that. I don't think we'll have a problem. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get rid of that. Go back to the style editor. Just I want you to just see how things are connected here and go back there and we're going to just delete the bitmap layer. Boom. Done. So it's really a lot of experimentation with this program. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to render this. Now you have to remember that this is the kind of program where you have to render the application of whatever you've done. So it's not all done there for you. You can render a preview, but I usually render just the, um, the main file. And then after it's rendered, that's when you're going to do a save. So we're going to go to Save As, and I want you to see the menu that I have here, how I'm going to save this. Now, I can save it as a project, which I will do eventually, but I actually want to save this right now as a PSD file. And look at the bottom, the bottom drop down. See, it says layer by layer. That will save all the layers that you have. And then you can open it in Photoshop and you can look at all the layers and you can play with it in Photoshop, which is exactly what we're going to do. So, and I know that the saved automatically to my desktop because that's the way I have it set up right now. And I just told it to save the project also, so I can always go back to this. Okay, so I am in Photoshop, and that was the original image, and I'm going to go and find it now. And yes, I have a lot of stuff on my desktop. <laughs> I regularly clean it, but not today. So now I look over there. I have two layers on the right side. There's the original image. And that original image, by the way, uh, there'll be another little video. I did it in, I prepped it in Topaz 5. Topaz Adjust 5 is coming out. It'll be out next week. And there was the setting in there that was just awesome. And I'm going to be showing you all the different effects I've done with that. I'm adding a layer mask. Now remember, I'm here in Photoshop now. So I'm going to get my brush and you can see how everything is all layered up. The painting is in the middle. I'm going to get a, a nice rough looking brush. I don't want it to be too smooth. So I'm going to get a rough looking brush and I'm going to also have it be um, a good large size. And what I'm doing is I'm painting the painting into this image. Now you can go either way. You can paint the painting into the image or you can paint the photographic elements into the painting. So, but I sort of wanted you to see how this is going to go and how this will start showing up. Because let's just say that you're doing a high school senior and you didn't want to do a lot of painting. This way you could run it all through post workshop. Now I'm painting the background. You could run it through Post Workshop, get your quick little painting, and then you could just add sort of the painted look to just the clothing and the body part and retain all the facial elements. And now you have a whole new look to sell, something really interesting really fast. And in a, in a future video, I'm going to show you something so cool I found in there. Post Workshop does retain a history. Now see, there's the painting. There it is. 
it's painted in and except that it's not on her face. Now I'm going to go ahead and experiment a little bit and put a tiny bit on her face. I'm going to make the brush smaller and this is very experimental. Um, I don't, I'm very honest. If I'm showing it to you, I haven't done it 400 times and then tried to make it perfect. I want to do it and experiment just like you will. So I'm painting some of the painting effect into her face and I'm going to decide that I'll keep some of that. And I think I'm going to go take some of that out a little bit too much. It looks a little bit too heavy. See, I'll flip my black and white. I didn't like the way that went over her eye there. But essentially now you have something that needs very little tweaking, very little done to it. Um, this video is running approximately 12 minutes long, and I did this faster than the 12 minutes. It was because I was videotaping. So this post-workshop is just great. Um, the link for it is at the bottom. Under the video, you'll find the link for this. And I also have a discount code for it, so hopefully it's still working, and you could save yourself a little bit on it. But here it is, and that painting's just going to be absolutely beautiful. And I wanted you to see here that I turned off the bottom layer, and that added some more texture to the background. When I turn that off, see? So it even looks more painterly in the background. And when I'm going to go ahead and drop the layers, you'll see it will still look really cool. So now I've added in that rough background without even doing any work. So, and you'll see the final painting. Be sure you look at the final painting also on the blog post um, at PixIQ. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten that, and I hope that you enjoyed this. I think that we did a really good job on this painting. And thank you.